Hey guys, Super Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at the animatronics found within Five Nights at Freddy's security breach. From the lowly staff bots to the mighty burn trap himself and everything in between, this video will function as a brief guide to each and every one of the scary and not so scary robotic wonders Gregory encounters during his journey through Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex. So sit back, relax, and let's take a guided tour through another animatronic nightmare. The most basic yet frequently encountered robot found in the Megaplex is surely the staff bots and their many variants. A brand new set of characters designed specifically for the sprawling Pizzaplex security breach takes place in. These staff bots swiftly zip around on a pair of wheels and feature a fairly basic design. Their faces are expressionless, big lifeless doll-like eyes their only distinguishing feature. Some of these bots are performers such as the comedy bots seen here. Others function as robotic janitors, cleaning up messes left behind by the people who visited during the day. Some cook in the kitchens, some serve behind counters, and some even feature as AI opponents for laser tag game Phaser Blast. Surely the most annoying and invasive of all are the map bots, who pop up near elevators to shove a floor plan in the faces of unsuspecting guests. Hi, please take this map. Take a map. Thank you, please enjoy. Free map. The map bots may be an annoyance, but at least they aren't particularly dangerous. The more security bots, on the other hand, can be lethal. While security bots don't attack directly, they will instead jump scare the player and call in reinforcements in the form of deadly animatronics Chica, Monty, and Roxy. This makes avoiding or temporarily shutting down these security bots imperative to Gregory's survival. Before we move on to the final security bot form, it is worth mentioning a smaller variant affectionately referred to by fans as Pat Pat. This Wally -E inspired mini bot can be found placed around the Pizzaplex warning visitors of wet floors. These Pat Pats are completely harmless, and unlike the cleaner bots, do not raise the alarm if Gregory is spotted. The final staff bot type found during the story of Security Breach is known as the Alpha Staff Bot. These were older designs now languishing in the sewer system beneath the Pizzaplex and have been corrupted by the Glitchtrap virus and reprogrammed to serve Vanny's dark purposes. Perhaps as a direct result of Glitchtrap and, by extension, William Afton's influence, these bots take on a nightmarish appearance reflecting the look of the crying children depicted in earlier FNAF titles. The victims of William Afton, who ended up haunting the various animatronics over the years. In fact, we even find this room full of childlike drawings while exploring the Alpha Staff Bot lair, suggesting these corrupted bots do indeed contain some form of remnant connecting them to the missing children. If players should fall into the various pits of garbage spread out around the sewer system, then these nightmare bots will instantly kill them. Endoskeletons have been a thing since the very first FNAF game. They are the skeletal structures found within each and every animatronic we encounter. However, when laid bare without the more friendly outer casing, these endos are quite frankly terrifying. In Security Breach, the endoskeletons take on a more complex and creepy form than ever before, now appearing in their glamrock design. We encounter them hanging up in the parts and service area, where it appears many different tests have been conducted, some of these resulting in violent behaviour as a result of Glitchtrap's malicious code infiltrating Fazbear Entertainment's software systems. This violent behaviour is confirmed when we encounter working versions of these endos for the first time. They appear several times throughout our adventure, but none scarier than whilst first navigating these dark and dingy maintenance tunnels. Here Gregory, and by extension the player, must keep a keen eye and flashlight on each endo to avoid them moving into attack. The endoskeletons only give chase when their victim's back is turned.
The Megaplex contains a daycare for younger children to spend time playing under the supervision of a rather eccentric animatronic known as the Daycare Attendant. This bizarre looking bot comes in two forms, Sun and Moon. The Sun animatronic has a sun for a face, adorned with a big bright smile and dressed in a jester-like outfit. He has a humanoid appearance with long lanky arms and legs. The sunny side of the attendant is hyperactive and playful, zeroing in on a potential playmate and throwing a million ideas for fun activities out at them at once. Hello! Oh, new friend, you're sure I'm late. Are we having a slumber party? Where are all your friends? We can finger paint, tell stories, drink fizzy pass until our heads explode and then stay up all night! If their playmate causes a mess, the daycare attendant begins to fret and panic, quickly trying to clean it up and restore his play center to a tidy, safe environment once again. Oh, no, no! What a mess! Oh, oh, it was the bottom! Where is the top? I clean up, clean up! While the Sun animatronic may be annoying and overwhelming, it is at least non-lethal. The same cannot be said for its moon counterpart. When the lights go out and darkness falls in the daycare, the moon attendant reveals himself to us. Naughty boy. Naughty boy. It's past your bedtime. You must be punished. Nighty night. Moon also features a creepy grin, but looks far scarier than his sunny counterpart. Its face resembles a moon and is clothed in pyjama decor and a sleeping cap. The moon animatronic sounds almost demonic and creepily dances around the daycare by night, taking care of any naughty children who misbehave. Of course, this violent side to the daycare attendant originates from the corruption Glitchtrap has spread through its programming. But even without that, I think most would agree this moon animatronic is a little intense for young children, and honestly has no place existing within a daycare. <laughs> Music Man first showed up as a purchasable attraction during Five Nights at Freddy's Pizzeria Simulator. For many players, despite his fleeting appearance, Music Man became iconic, awarded the honour of most nightmarish animatronic of all time. So it's not too surprising that developer Steelwall Studios included this animatronic arachnoid in Security Breach twice. We first encounter Music Man while navigating the claustrophobic vents connecting up various parts of the Pizzaplex. The pitter-patter of tiny feet reverberating through sheet metal echo behind us before the horrifying sight of a mini wind-up Music Man is revealed to be its origin. Wind-up Music Man looks similar to the original Music Man design, with giant eyes, a wide grinning mouth, tiny top hat and pair of cymbals to clash. Of course, its defining feature are the six spider-like legs Music Man uses to quickly move about with. However, while this mini wind-up variant of the original Terror is scary enough, there is an even more unsettling form Music Man takes on during the late game. Known as DJ Music Man, this giant version of the spidery menace wears a pair of headphones and spins tunes at the Fazcade, a huge multi-layered arcade with a disco at its centre. It is here DJ Music Man resides, looming over a smoke-filled dance floor. During the story of Security Breach, Gregory is tasked with flipping three switches scattered about the Fazcade in order to restore power to a nearby maintenance bay. While doing so, DJ Music Man attempts to stop him at every turn, this culminating in a tense chase through a tunnel system. Well done. The arcade has successfully rebooted. Return to the security office.
With the supporting cast of animatronics now explained, it's time to turn our attention to the main four and beyond. The first of these star attractions is everyone's favourite pizza-loving chicken, Chica, who shows up in a new slimmed-down glamrock form for this game. Her body is painted in a white and pink colour scheme, and she wears bangles on her wrists and a bow in her hair. Chica's legs are themed around 1980s glamrock styling, with bright animal prints taped across them. Chica can be spotted in her room rocking out on the guitar, her instrument of choice. When venturing inside her private quarters, it becomes obvious that once again Chica lives up to her gluttonous reputation. The floor is littered with pizza boxes. In fact, Chica can be found rifling through garbage throughout the game, fixated on food and seemingly not too bothered as to its condition or hygiene. Strangely, despite her fixation on unhealthy food types, Chica is the face of fitness around the Pizzaplex. She even has a gym featuring the attraction Mazer Size, where kids are encouraged to eat fast food and then work it back off after. Chica can be stunned with items such as the Fazcam and Faz Blaster, and is therefore the easiest of the three main enemy animatronics to escape from. If we are caught, then the following jump scare plays out. During the course of the game, if Gregory chooses to seek out the Faz Blaster, then he must face off against Glamrock Chica in a boss battle. This begins when, in order to acquire her voice box, Gregory lures Chica into the trash compactor and mangles her body. I smell pizza! Oh, oh no. After doing so, Chica's damaged, beakless remains pursue Gregory through the sewer system and later the pizzaplex above. Here are a few interactions and her jump scare while in this new nightmarish form. The angriest and most aggressive of the main three is without doubt Montgomery Gator, or Monty as he is often referred to for short. A tall green alligator with a punk rock appearance, Monty's shades keep him safe from the flash of Gregory's Fazcam, ruling out the ability to stun him and therefore making flight our only option. Luckily Monty is the slowest of all animatronics, and so running from him is fairly easy most of the time, as long as a hiding spot isn't too far away that is. Monty also has the ability to leap high in the air and land right beside the player, this allowing the reptilian menace to close ground quickly if needed. When examining Monty's showroom, we can see just how furious he has become as a result of Glitchtrap's influence, slashing the walls and destroying the furniture around him. It's clear to see his main perk is strength. Monty mostly resides in the Gator Golf Zone. This extravagant swamp-themed golf course is Monty's base of operation and suits his southern persona well. We are actually able to play a few rounds of golf ourselves when interacting with this arcade machine. Monty's boss encounter takes place on a catwalk above the Gator Golf course itself. 
Gregory must use these ball cannons to fill up a splash bucket, all while avoiding Monty's dangerous advances. Eventually, Gregory dunks the bucket of balls on top of Monty and sends him crashing down into the depths of the golf course below, where he breaks into several bite-sized pieces. After doing so, Gregory is able to remove Monty's claws and use them as an upgrade for Freddy. Monty returns later in mangled form to attack from events during certain sequences. The last of the three main antagonists is rocking animatronic wolf Roxanne, or Roxy for short. Roxy dresses once again in a punk rock outfit. She has bright yellow eyes, rows of dagger-like teeth, and sharp clawed hands. Her ears are pierced, and her hair long and silver with a green streak. She wears shoulder pads and plays the electronic keyboard as her instrument of choice. Roxy has one of the most complex and interesting personalities of any animatronic from the series. She is deeply narcissistic, staring into her mirror and complimenting herself over and over, a trait which carries over into gameplay as we often hear Roxy praising herself while on the hunt. Your hair is beautiful. Your tail is beautiful. Everyone was watching you. Everyone loves you. Everyone wants to be you. You are the best. Despite praising herself and bullying others with mean-spirited taunts, it seems Roxy battles with deep self-esteem issues. We occasionally find her crying and calling herself a failure, perhaps letting her true feelings bleed into reality for a brief moment. <laughs> I'm not a loser. Roxanne Wolf can be found situated at Roxy Raceway, a location of the Pizzaplex centered around high-speed racetrack frills, but also pampering in the form of the Glamrock Beauty Salon. I guess a girl's gotta look good even when she's tearing up the racetrack. Roxy is one of the fastest animatronics in the game. If spotted, players will only have a few seconds to find a safe hiding spot, as Roxy arches her back to pounce and then runs down her prey in the blink of an eye. To defeat Roxanne and take her bright yellow eyes, Gregory must defeat her at her own game, climbing into a race car and running Roxy down. The eyeless, mangled endo of Roxy then pursues us for the remainder of the game, stalking us first through the fiery furnace below the raceway, and later in the mall above. In this new state, Roxy is unable to be stunned by the Fazblaster or camera, and relies on audio cues to locate her target. With this in mind, it is imperative we sneak past Roxy in stealth mode whenever we encounter her mangled form.
the star of a glam rock band and face of Fazbear Entertainment, Freddy Fazbear returns with a new slick and stylish look for Security Breach. His body is orange and decorated with rocking flourishes, which complement his iconic original accessories, the top hat and bow tie. As usual, Freddy is the singer in the glam rock band, and the most beloved animatronic of all to those visiting the pizzeria. His chest compartment can even open up in order to store birthday cakes and then present them to children during VIP birthday party events. This birthday cake hatch comes in mighty handy for lost child Gregory during his adventure. You see, Gregory is small enough to climb inside this compartment and ride around with Freddy in relative safety. The only issue is that Freddy's power runs down, and if we are inside him when it does, then the animatronic bear will turn on Gregory and give the player a jump scare. In order to avoid this outcome, we must get Freddy to one of the many charge stations located around the wall, where his battery can be juiced back up. Freddy allows Gregory to ride around inside him because, unlike the other animatronics under Glitchtrap's control, Freddy has managed to fight against the malicious code and so instead opts to help the unfortunate child out. In fact, Freddy exhibits compassion and kindness throughout the story of Security Breach, showing him to be good-natured and protective at his core. I told you she was after me. I said nothing. I will keep you safe. Let us go. It's like the whole place is trying to get me. I am not. Why? I do not know. I want to help you. However, there are still moments when Freddy will lose control and attack. For example, during sequences where Gregory must upgrade him. One wrong move while on this operating table and Freddy will jump scare us, causing a game over to occur. Freddy and Gregory bond over the course of a game, and there are a host of endings in which the two friends escape the Pizzaplex together, and in some cases, even live happily ever after. Encountered during Security Breach's true ending, the blob is a disturbing amalgamation of past animatronics melted into a goopy mass of pure terror, residing in the ruins of an old Fazbear pizzeria located directly beneath the Megaplex. Its body contains the remains of several iconic animatronics, including Bonnie, Chica, Molten Freddy, Circus Baby, and Mangle. It seems as though the blob has no real personality of its own, rather the collective mass of animatronic parts work together to form an entity of pure rage and hatred. Much of this hatred directed towards series villain William Afton and his burn trap guys, who the blob consumes during the final cutscene. During gameplay, the blob appears as an addition to the Afton boss fight. Its long tentacles emerge from manholes in the floor and ceiling, and if these tendrils manage to touch Gregory, then Molten Freddy will leap out to attack. The final animatronic on today's list is Security Breach's big bad William Afton himself, returning via his glitchtrap form into the burned and mangled body of past animatronic Springtrap. This new form of Afton has been dubbed Burntrap. Burntrap's appearance is suitably demonic for such an evil entity. His body is withered and burned, the lower jaw of his face ripped out and displaying Afton's human skull, and his skeletal remains can be spotted up and down the torn and tattered animatronic outer shell. Burntrap came to be via the help of his cult-like disciple Vanny. Glitchtrap used Vanny to assist him in returning to this animatronic endo, and slowly transitioning from his digital prison to the physical world, using remnants from the missing children to do so. After emerging from his incubation chamber earlier than planned, Burntrap's strength is not at full power, and so Freddy manages to fight against his attempts to control him. Stop him. What was that? Are you okay? He is trying to take control of me. I do not think I can fight it for long. He? What is that thing? 
Gregory must act quickly, rushing to Freddy's aid and burning Afton as he tries to infect Freddy's mind. If Gregory and Freddy manage to defeat Burntrap, then he once again burns up in the flames of the exploding Pizzaplex, consumed by his victims in their animatronic form and dragged back to the hell he escaped from. And on that sinister note, we reach the end of this comprehensive look at each and every animatronic from Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it both entertaining and informative. If you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.